The northern New South Wales town of Moree has been cut in two after the Mehi River peaked at 10.5 metres this morning. An evacuation order remains in place for residents in low-lying areas. Joining me live now is Moree Mayor Katrina Humphreys. Thanks for your time at a very difficult time. So the town cut in two. What will that mean? Is there one side that's going to need particular help as this happens? Good afternoon, Tom. Yes, the, the northern side of Moree is our, our vulnerable side. We've got uh, maybe up to 100 houses uh, affected with flood water. We've got um, a, a peak that, that came this morning. Uh, the rise overnight was really, really big. And it was a little bit cruel in a way because we had yesterday afternoon a little bit of a drop in our, in our river heights and then... Um, a lot of people relaxed and we said, no, 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 you can't relax. We know there's more water coming. Uh, and yeah, it came in overnight, came in. And the last, last chance I got to have a look at the north side was about half past 10, quarter to 11 last night. So it, it started sort of probably about one o'clock. We really had a problem and, and our only street that we had left open across the Mehi River was Bailo Street and we had to close that and um, and it's still closed, but we're, we're hoping the water will go down sufficiently to reopen that as soon as possible. We've got a, a huge number of people here to help us clean up. Um, you know, and we're, we're, we're still in flood mode and we're talking about clean up mm. mode and recovery mode because all these things have to be done in parallel. Yeah, they do, and I guess it at least gives some people some focus after the, the, the water does um, actually reside. But what about insurance? How many people are worried or flat out won't be insured for this event and are facing crisis? Look, in, insurance, flood insurance is always an extremely expensive thing, but we do have people that... that live in this flood area and they were there in 2012 so a lot of the lessons were learned some people have raised their houses some people have chosen not to insure and some people have chosen to insure so uh i've, I've been saying to people this morning yeah, really and truly you, you've got to talk to your insurance company and take lots and lots mm. and lots and lots of photographs of everything to cover themselves right. uh for the for the claims ahead now, you mentioned 2012. I remember seeing it actually in 2012, 2011. There was a flood. 2017, there was a storm-related flood as well. Copping it a lot of late, you mentioned raising up houses. Is there a solution needed, perhaps a permanent mandated one, around the low-lying areas of Moree? Well, look, the, the low-lying areas of Moree uh, have been there for a long, a long, long time. Um, and a lot of the houses have been lifted. Uh, it's a, it's a floodplain and Moree's flat. Um, and it's on our beautiful black soil, which makes us very productive. So the, the flatness is, is not always our friend because the, the flood water does go out. We, we weren't inundated in 2017 and we've had a few storm events, of, but not of, not of magnitude. Mm. The, the 2020 uh, was, a, was a riverine flood. It, it really didn't do a lot of damage outside of the banks. It didn't break much. So it was like a, a really good high water flow that topped everything up nicely so um yeah look it's it's a it's always a struggle and uh the south side of moree is a higher area but uh there's a lot of houses that have been lifted uh sadly there's a few that haven't uh and and yeah it's never going to be a perfect scenario and we've been trying to since 2012 we've had a project on which is a third state government and a third federal government funded uh with the local contributors as well so we've, we've been doing our best but um right. you know right. you can't fight with mother nature she wins every time no, that's true. So on those raising of houses, you mentioned that program. After that program is accounted for, what does it roughly cost for your average house to be raised, Katrina? It varies. There's a lot of variance and it depends whether it's a, a house. You can't raise a house on a slab, of course, so the, the houses have to be raised um, manually and the, the, the ones that are stumped. Uh, and on piers, they're the ones that you can raise. So it depends on the size of the house, anywhere from 80 to 150,000, if you can get a house raiser. You know, it's, it's a very right. specialist job. So it hasn't been a fast rollout of house raising and some people have chosen not to. So it's, it's difficult. Um, there's a lot of people that'll be very happy that they have. Uh, and it's been ongoing for many, many years. There's, there's nothing new about... Um, flooding on the plains. We have a lot of 
rules and regs around new buildings and any subdivisions in the floodplain areas are, um, are looked at very, very closely. But we, we have a, a half metre, what we call half metre above free, free board, which is a state policy that we adhere to. And that means that you have to be half a metre above the, the highest known flood. Your floor level has to be half a metre about, above your highest known flood. But we have, because we have houses that are raised up eight and ten feet, a, a lot of... Um, there's, you know, people put in uh, barbecue areas and things underneath because most of the time we don't have floods. So, mm. you know, we utilise our space to the best of our ability. Uh, we all make choices in life that sometimes we regret and sometimes we're perfectly happy with, but nobody wants water through their house. But, you know, Mother Nature has the final say and we have to deal with it. We've got a lot of people lined up to, to help clear the, uh, the mud out of the houses as, as this happens because yeah. really important yeah. as the water recedes that you hose out and get that mud and slurry and rubbish out as the water recedes and not let the mud dry. Yeah, that's such a hard part of it, isn't it? And uh, such a big effort. So glad you sound like you've got plenty of assistance. Look, we wish you all the best. Katrina Humphreys says that clean-up, we hope, can begin soon. Thank you. Tom, yeah, we're, we're all a bit shell-shocked. It happened so quickly. It was a flood that was quicker than what we usually expect. We usually have a bit more time. But this rain came Monday night, Tuesday morning, and mm. we were flooded Wednesday night. And that's, that's very, very quick for us. Yeah, they often get the blue sky, sky floods in Moree, so a bit different this time. That was Katrina Humphreys, the Moree mayor there, as they're facing a tough task ahead.